Big Daddy here with another video in the series of customizing KDE, Plasma 5. So we're off to the ocean of KDE system settings. So let's jump right in. So the last video, we ended up being done with startup and shutdown. And we're going to try to get through search and personalization today. So there's not a whole lot of settings in search and personalization, but there are a few. Um, so if you want Plasma, whether it's in KRunner or the menus to search through everything and search for all types of files, you don't really need to do anything in here. Basically, the only thing you could do is clear your history of recent searches that it made. But if you want it to not search for certain types, then you would come in here and say, if you didn't want it to search for audio files, uncheck that, and now it won't search through your files, your emails, or anything for audio files. That's basically all that's in here. That's it. You were expecting more? Okay. Um, and the other thing is file search. Now, there's not a whole lot in here except to enable or disable file search. But what you can do is you can, if you have, say, another system drive that you don't want Plasma to search through, you can come in here and you can add it. So uh, let's see here. We would go to um, media and say I didn't want it to search for files on this hard drive because I don't want anything I don't have anything on there that it, I would need. You could hit OK, and now it will, won't search through that specific hard drive for files. I wanted to search through that because I have my videos on there, and you'll see that later, but that's how you would do it if you wanted to add something and restrict it from searching that drive. So off to personalization. Now, the account details, and I'm going to skip over KDE, K wallet uh, because one I've never had a whole lot of success with K wallet two there's not the greatest documentation on using it or problems with it and three I did look at the vol I did look at the documentation on it but it didn't really help me solve any of the issues that I had with it and to be honest with you most KDE users that have been using KDE for a while disable it right when they that's one of the first customizations that they do is disable KWallet because most people have password managers uh, installed and KWallet doesn't seem to cooperate with like browsers like Firefox and Chromium and all that so we're not going to get into the whole KWallet thing maybe I'll do a separate video on KWallet sometime but that's for another day. All right, the user manager, what you can do in here is just exactly what it says. You can you manage your users and you can add a new one. So here is my user right now. If I wanted to, I could click new user and I could enter the name. I could change the avatar. I could put the real name, the email address, and the password. And if it's somebody that knows is comp competent you would click administrator so that they could actually do administrator things I, if i'm not mistaken there were there was a time before that i didn't click administrator and you know they could they basically couldn't do anything on the system so they didn't even have access to certain drives so <laughs> it's, uh i guess that's okay if that person doesn't know what they're doing but for me uh, if i add a new user i'm going to make him an administrator um over to regional settings now, most of these are going to be set when you install the operating system. So you're going to pick your language, your keyboard layout, and all that stuff. You're going to pick all that when you install it. So the only reason that you might have to come in here is if for some reason maybe you add another user. And in that user's system settings when you log on, you could change the language or the formats for them specifically so it wouldn't affect yours. Um, you can change in formats, you can change the detailed settings, like the numbers, the time, you can change it to a different currency, measurement units on down the list. Spell check. It's enabled 
but it's not going to automatically spell check until you check this here and hit apply. And then it will automatically spell check uh, in certain applications of what you type. And you can also add words that you want it to ignore because, you know, obviously these words are not in the English language or any other language really. Um, so they're not going to be there. So you want it to ignore that so you don't have a spell check pop up for these specific words. You can add or remove as many as you want or however you want. Date and time. Now I have this set. This is on by default, but I have it set off because I run a dual boot system with Windows and the time goes off the BIOS on the computer and it gets messed up between the two. So depending on which one I set the time to, if I set it in Linux and I reboot into Windows, the time is going to be off in Windows and vice versa. If I set it in Windows, then I come back and I reboot into Linux, it's going to be off because it goes off the hardware uh, BIOS uh, clock and it just messes up. So it's a downside to dual booting both Linux and Windows, but that's what I got to do right now. Uh, but normally it would be set to time zone automatic or time and date automatically because it's not 2 p.m. right now, just so you know. And here you can set your time zone as well. So in notifications, you have this is basically for any kind of event or any kind of notification you can customize. So for example, accessibility is the first source and say sticky keys. So anytime sticky keys has been enabled or disabled, right now it is set to show a message. So this is the state that it's in. This is the title and this is the description. So if you notice that if we wanted to play a sound when sticky keys has been enabled, you'll notice that the little icon pops up here and that shows you the state. And same way when you check these, there'll be an icon there. Um, now, you probably can't hear the sounds on the video for whatever reason. I don't know why it's not picking up the system sounds, but it's not picking up the system sounds. Um, but you can use the default system sound or you can, if you have sounds on your computer, you can pick a sound and it will play that sound by default. So this is very useful in certain scenarios. Now I'm going to uncheck that because I don't want it on there, but this is very useful if for some reason you have something like, for example, Bluetooth and you want to know when the connection failed, you want it to play a sound so that it's not just a pop-up. You can do that. Uh, I have it set actually on discover. So when discover finds updates, it will, not only show a pop-up message, but it will play a sound. So, and I have it set to a uh, Windows 7 sound because that's the only sounds I could find at the moment. And I don't know if you heard that or not, but that is the basically the system ready sound for Windows 7. That, so that's what you can do. Now you can also run a, you can also do things like log it to a file and you would basically click this and then show it where to put it. Um, and then mark the taskbar entry or run a command. Now, there may be commands that you want to run after the updates. I can't think of any right at the moment off the top of my head, but there may be, if you're a geek, maybe you'll have a command that you want to run after the, you updated. But there's also um, many different sounds you can choose from here. So the K-Window Manager, K-Win, you can, when the graphics are reset, you can play a sound log to a file. If you're having trouble with your graphics card, it might be good to log it to a file so you can see, you know, what the errors are and what the problem is. Uh, Kden Live. And it has a scroll here. So there's many, many more options that you can go through. We'll just go through a couple. Uh, Plasma Workspace is one where I actually have it set to when I log in to play a sound because by default, it's not set to play a sound by when I log in. Now, I don't want it to show a message in the pop-up, but I do want it to play a sound. Um, and one other one I wanted to show you, and let's see here. Um, ah, the drop-down terminal. So I use the drop-down terminal, but every time that it starts up, 
and this was checked by default. Every time it starts up, it pops up a box saying that it started. Well, I don't really want to see that it starts up every time. I know that it's starting up. So you can uncheck the message. So this is where it gets into customizing how you want your system and how you want to, what notifications you want to see and what you don't want to see, what you want to hear and what you don't want to hear. But this is also, like I said, where you would enable sounds if you wanted to hear them. So you can disable sounds for all of these events at one time, uh, or you can do them one at a time. If you want no sounds, that's fine. Most people want no sounds, but I don't mind sounds. All right, that's it for notifications. And then applications, you have your default applications. Now, uh, this is not the prettiest area. And KDE in general is a beautiful operating system, but there are certain areas that I think could use use attention. For example, you have this set up in other desktop environments. They have it to where it's their big icons and they show you exactly which one is. So, and I would say it's comparable to the icon view of Dolphin to the list view of Dolphin, especially when it's really small. And maybe, you know, some people like this and some people like this. I like it like the icons. So anyway, that's a little side note my personal preference um, but for your email client uh, kmail is usually installed but i use thunderbird so i change it here and if you do use a different one you can just click the box find your app and hit ok and it'll be your default app so uh, file manager is dolphin which is the best file manager on the planet i don't know why you'd want to use any other file manager besides that um, terminal emulator is the Hold on, let me turn off my phone and because it's always on beeping at me. Uh, terminal emulator is a uh, console, and that's what I would that's what I use. Uh, it's a KDE app, and the web browser usually the web browsers have a make this default, make this my default web browser in it, and it will do that. If it doesn't work for you, you can come in here and you can choose your default web browser. So we're going to head down to file application or file associations and this is where you can dig down deep into the settings of each app and what they do and how they're listed. So for example, we'll do um, MPEG. Okay, so under audio, you have the different file types, but under audio, you have MPEG. And these are the file associations file formats that are associated with MPEG, MP3 and MPGA. And this is the order of the applications that you want. Now, you can remove any ones you want, and I had actually added that to test this out, but you can change the order. So what this do actually does in real, real looking at it, um, you can go in here and right-click on a audio file, and this is the listing of of these items here. So in the order that they're in. Now, you can change that order. So for example, if I want to add an item to here and I want, let's see, G Music Browser, and I want to hit OK, and now it's at the top, I can move that down. I can make it the second one. Say I want the G Music Browser, but I want it as my second one. So now when I right click and hit open with, now you see MPV and then you see G Music Browser as the second option for your MP3s. And you can hit other and add more, but this is basically where you would add it if you weren't clicking on a file, all right? And you can do that with anything. You can do that with MP4s. Um, with any type of file, you can change not only the file type that's associated with it, but you can add and customize the layout of what the preferred applications are. So I don't know all about the embedding um, of this, but we'll just skip over that because you didn't see that. You don't really see that, do you? Okay, so like I said, you can do the same thing with images, JPEG. These are the file uh, formats that are associated with this section, and you can make it your, say you want it to be GIMP. You can move that up, so that will be the first one listed to open up a JPEG. So there you go. There's the customizing of the file associations. 
Now, the locations are the default locations of, you know, home, your username, and the folder. So documents path is the documents. All right. Now, movies is actually the videos. All right. And one thing, you can change the actual path location of it. So, for example, I have a, a pretty big video collection. And it is not on my solid state drive that my KDE Neon is installed on because it won't fit. I mean, it's a 512 gigabyte solid state, but it's, there's not enough. I have like 500 gigabytes of videos, so there's no there's no way I can fit all those videos onto that drive. So I leave it on a second drive, which is the uh, my two terabyte drive, and I change the location in here so that when I actually go to Dolphin and I click on videos, it points to the two terabyte drive location. So now when you click on this and you see the path, it's still going to say home Big Daddy videos. But that's not where the location actually is. It's actually in this terab two terabyte drive. So that makes it easy. So say you have a big extensive music collection on a different drive and you don't want it taking up space on your regular drive, you can change the music path to that drive and it'll it'll pick it up. So it's a nice feature. Now the last thing is launch feedback and it's set by default to be on the bouncing cursor and I don't know if you're going to actually be able to see the animations in the videos so we'll we'll try it but you'll see the bouncing little cursor for Firefox, okay? So then you have the blinking cursor which doesn't really blink it just pops up. So there it just pops up and it goes away. Okay. The passive busy cursor seems to be the same uh, type of just popping up. And I that may be because of my video settings or whatever, but I don't see a difference in placing it as passive busy cursor to the blinking cursor. And like I said, that may just be because I'm running video right now recording and you know, sometimes it gets goofy when you're recording. Or you can have no busy cursor where it won't pop up anything. You click it and it won't show you anything. It'll just be nothing, just like here. But I'm okay with the bouncing cursor, so that's okay. Here is the indicated indication timeout. So if you open this up and it goes past five seconds before it opens, it'll timeout. And you have the enable taskbar notification as well. So that is it for personalization. In the next video, we're going to go to network and we'll see if we can get that done. But until then, Big Daddy out.